Meet Jimmy Boy, a self-made multimillionaire living a life of pure luxury. My clientele list goes back 50 Cent, Floyd Mayweather, Future, Andy Ruiz, Takashi 69. But life wasn't always like this for Jimmy. Before making his millions, he spent years on the streets in and out of prison. I went to juvie at least 10 times. Attempted murder charge, organized crime charge. When I got out, it was like, I gotta do better. My daughter needs me, your kids need you. His door has a diamond on it. <laughs> oh. What's up, man? Good morning, dude. Good morning. What time do you get up at? I get about like 6.40, 6.30, and then get the kids ready and stuff like that. My daughter's 16, and then my son is nine, and then my youngest is three. You're your single dad? Yep. Was your house before this anything like this house? No, nah, definitely not. What about the house you grew up in? Oh, man. That was my townhouse that I grew up right here. Crazy, a lot of memories. This is where I caught my attempt to murder and uh, organized crime charge. This one right here, a two bedroom townhouse. Me and my dad lived there. So when I went to prison, right, my dad married this lady. And so when I came home while I was in prison, they painted my whole fucking room like this toothpaste color. Bro. That, that's right still there. there right there. That's from then, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I was heated, bro. Growing up seemed normal, you know, in every community in life, there's bad and good things. The first time I was incarcerated, I think I was like 14. And what were you incarcerated um, for? for skipping school. I went to juvie at least 10 times. The first time I really got arrested for something big, it was right before I turned 15. I was hanging out with a bunch of kids next to a school. The door to the gym was open and we went in there and started taking stuff. You know, that ended up becoming a bigger issue than what it was and we all got in trouble. That's when I think like my life started as a, being incarcerated. Like I was getting incarcerated every month, every couple months after that, like back to back. But I definitely would not let my children go to schools yeah. I went to. Yeah, for sure, <laughs> have fun at school. <laughs> what are you gonna learn today? Stay true. Stay true. So cute, man. What's up, my boy? That's little Jimmy right there. That's my junior. You gonna wake up in the morning, Jimmy? Sometimes. <laughs> well, the highest grade I completed was eighth grade. I went to juvenile prison, and that's where they made me get my GED at 16. The school just wasn't for me, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just don't know why. Like, I tried, I tried. Shit, I don't know what it is, you know? I'll sit there and I just can't think of, like, school. You know, I'm thinking about trying to take over the world, make money, or find a way to do business. It was always like that for me. You know? This is a rare one. He's flooded in Schwarzkey crystals. That's so you? <laughs> I can see why you got it, though. <laughs> Retail, it was like, I think, uh, 10,000. And now, how much? Of course, like maybe 30, 35,000. And I ended up buying this for, I think, maybe like 3,000. But right now, it's worth like 15,000. Damn. Tell me what your spending habits are like. What are things you splurge on, and what are some things that you'll save on? Like it's a $10 t-shirt, you know what I mean? My shorts, 30 bucks. I'll spend 20, 30,000 in the club or on a yacht, whatever. Life is all about trial and error. Learning the hard way is the best way. 17, I, I got charged as an adult. I got charged with attempted murder and uh, organized crime. We ended up stealing a car that belonged to a dude. His brother was a cop. They arrested us. When they raided my house, they found a gun under my bed and it linked back to a shooting. So they basically charged me for the shooting and for the charge. This whole back lot was full of cop cars. With 30 cop cars, she was wild. It was, a, it was a time of life, you know what I mean? And it made me who I am today. So I'm appreciative of it. You know, I was the youngest in the jail. They put me in with murderers. I'm not gonna lie, it was it's like a wake up call. My lawyer was able to get it dropped down to deadly conduct with discharge of a firearm and uh, theft. So I ended up receiving a three year prison sentence. I've had this piece since 2007. It's heavy. It's an ecstasy pill. Oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that was like really how I really came up. I paid for my lawyer to get me an appeal bond. Six months later, I caught a federal charge for wow. possession of methylene dioxymethamphetamine, which is MDMA ecstasy, uh, would attempt to distribute and conspiracy. Me being crazy, I was like, fucking, let's make a peace. I try to wash my hands from that life and deny it. And you can't really hide from it who you are. Like, this is a statement of a place in my life that made me who I am today. You know, yeah. whether that was a good or bad situation, whatever came from it, it got me here. So when I caught the Fed case, they were trying to stack on top another 60 months. So basically I was facing eight years. And that Monday we went there and the judge threw out the case. The thing with federal yeah. cases, a judge has the right to throw a case out if he feels it's not strong enough. So you didn't do any of the time for all that stuff? I only did four months in, in federal. Wow. Uh, and when you came out all, after all that, was that when things changed for you? The craziest thing is when I came out after all that, I told myself I would never sell pills again. It lasted for like maybe a year or less. 
then I got back to knowing what I know how to do. You know, I'm a businessman. So I went back to the streets to making money. No matter what point you're at in life, there's always a path to a better position. Work through the tough times, keep your head up and hit subscribe for more stories like this one. So this is my daughter's uh, actual watch collection right here. This is a Chanel J12, I think 19,000. This was a Cartier Santos, 25,000. Uh, this one was a Lady Two-Tone White and Rose Gold, uh, fully iced out, uh, 65,000 right now. Let's one see. of those watches is worth more than my Civic back home. <laughs> <laughs> This is the queen right here. Good morning. Uh, I go by Ling Ling, Bling Bling, Frost bit, and I'm super on. Never had an off switch. Do you ever feel like you'll follow your dad in his footsteps? I definitely have thought about it, but I don't think I've ever really. <laughs> 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 what do you think? I never knew you thought about it. The reason why I'm even in this position I am in my life is because of her. I picked her up from school, and she just made a video where we were joking around. It just caught wind like crazy. When my daughter went viral, it took us as a company to a whole different level, you know what I'm saying? It, it got us out in front of so many people's faces. This empire that was built is just as much as hers and it is mine, you know what I mean? I used to be outside with my friends and they'll be selling crack and I'll be selling pills and we'll start rapping for fun and do things like that. And they'll always tell me like, man, you should try to rap. You should go to the studio and record this, man. I'd buy it and I'd be like, whatever, shut the fuck up. I ended up meeting a really big rapper at the time in Houston. He heard me rap and he was like, bro, like I want to really get you into the studio. But I had a song circulating the radio. And then when I had my daughter, you know, it was just really hard living that life. Her mom wasn't used to touring and, you know, being a celebrity now. I'm traveling, girls, fans, groupies. It caused a lot of friction at home. And so I decided to step back from that and focus on my child. And that's when I ended up back in the streets. So Jimmy went from drug dealer to touring rap artist, but how did he clean up and end up where he is now? I don't know if you remember when 6 9 did that video with uh, 50 Cent. You know, I got asthma and shit. Oh. So I got that piece. Oh! And this piece right here is going to be worth like a million dollars one day. You see? <laughs> so don't come here and talk about your failed gym, motherfucker. Yeah, I, I did all the six times jury. All the ones before when he went viral, I did all those. I seen on his face, he had a, you know, Billy the Puppet. I said, okay, we should do the Billy the Puppet. So like, you're the fucking jigsaw. And I made it and it, it's beautiful, bro. I love it. And two things that I learned from 50, it will be with me forever. When you give, give from your heart. Because if you don't, that means they took it from you. And number two is a smart man. It's a man that learns from his mistakes. But a man that learns from other people's mistakes, is considered a genius. If you want to learn from the mistakes of multimillionaires like Jimmy Boy, hit subscribe for weekly content, and you can also find tons of videos I've done in the past on my channel. If I go back to my younger self, I'd tell that motherfucker he needed to fucking be more active. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> That's what I was talking about. I'm 40 now, say so I'm single, you know, I gotta get right, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> It's all worth it, baby. No pain, no gain. I got locked up again in 2010. And so I had told my daughter that I had to go on tour in China. I couldn't tell her I got locked up. And we would be on the phone talking, being on the phone with her and hearing her tell me like, I want you to come home. It killed me. Like I would, I would be sitting in jail crying like a baby, like asking myself, like, why did I put like an innocent child through this? You know? When I got out, it was like, I got to do better. I can't go to jail again because it really made me realize like, my daughter needs me. Your kids need you. No matter how much money you make or no matter anything you do, if you're not there for them, like you're really hurting them more than anything. You know what I'm saying? How did you get into jewelry work? What was the transition? The only thing that separates successful people and not successful people is experience. I had like one main jeweler that I used to always go to, which was his name was Iceman Nick. He's from out here. I started like bringing a lot of creative designs for Nick and his company. When I got into selling jewelry, the way I looked at it was like, this is basically the same hustle as before, just different product. Jewelry business is just like the dope game. Honestly, I feel like it's worse, you know what I mean? Like, uh, it's a lot of jealousy, a lot of envy. It's a grimy business. Popular in this area? Yeah, you can say that. Tell me what this massive thing is here. This is insane, dude. This is what you call a quarter million dollars, you know what I'm saying? Are you gonna put it on me? I'll I get that it. luxury? Uh-huh. All right, now see how fast I can run. <laughs> I just bolt out. 
My typical work schedule, pretty much 24 hours a day. My involvement, this is 110%. I changed the game. What I did was I turned the jewelry business into something cool. Before it's like, here we have this thing, duh, 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 $17.99. As far as me, I'm like, oh yeah, look what we got here. This shit looking right, this shit busting, not rusting. Have these hoes lusting. My heart is beating so fast for you. How do you balance work, life, family? <sighs> My best way to put it is, um, I can show you better than I can tell you. You work hard, you play hard. <laughs> I feel like every situation and chapter of my life that I was doing music or I was doing this and that, it shaped and prepared me to become the person that I am today. In the next 10, 20 years of what I see in my future, an early retirement, travel the world and be able to speak to more people that maybe felt how I felt 15, 20 years ago. Give them hope, motivation. You know, just wanna be an example to people, you know, because me growing up, I didn't have nobody. For me, just to be able to give other people hope, I think is, is the best thing, you know, and if I can change one person's path, then, you know, I feel like I did my job. I feel like the most interesting people in this world are the people that have been through the most shit. So it's like, you gotta learn. You can't cheat the grind. It knows how much you put in and you'll get back how much you put in. You don't get more. Go check out this video to meet the real life Batman. What the <laughs> hell? This looks like a Batmobile. Look from the front. This but is the Batmobile. I'm Batman.